Today we are going to talk about edema in patients with cardiac failure and the first topic that we are going to discuss is that inability of the acute cardiac failure to cause peripheral edema rapidly. Now we are going to discuss edema in cardiac failure but the first thing is that we are going to discuss that why acute cardiac failure is unable to cause peripheral edema rapidly. So there are two words very important. First is the acute failure and the second thing is rapidly. It means that even in the acute failure peripheral edema do occur but it will not occur rapidly. So first of all we are going to uh, revise and summarize the uh, cardiac circuit and they explain the formation or of edema and then we are going to discuss it in detail. So basically what happens is that normally the blood from the peripheries comes to the heart in the right atrium RA then the blood goes into the right ventricle right RV from the right ventricle blood goes into the lungs the lung in the lungs blood gets oxygenated into the it gets oxygenated and it returns into the left atrium LA. From the left atrium blood goes into the left ventricle LV and from the left ventricle blood the oxygenated blood goes to the whole of the body where the nutrients are consumed, consumed and the deoxygenated blood then returns back to the heart. Now in this process, in this process if everything is normal the the pressure in the aorta which here we are going to label it is mean aortic pressure the pressure in the aorta in the circulation is around 100 normally 100 millimeter of mercury. Then the pressure at the level of right atrium, pressure at the level, level of right atrium normally in the normal circumstances is zero. And pressure in the capillaries, pressure at the level of capillaries. We will define capillaries or we will show capillaries at this level because this is the end point. This is the junction between the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. So at this level capillaries are present because the blood comes in the aorta then it goes into the uh, arteries then arterioles and then small uh, then capillaries and then it goes into the uh, venules, veins and uh, vena cava, etc. Then go, go back to the heart. So pressure at the level of capillaries or the capillary pressure, it's normally around 17 millimeter of mercury. Sorry. Yes, 17 millimeter of mercury. So if, if everything is normal, if the heart is pumping normally, if the blood is oxygenated normally, if the, the nutrients are consumed normally, this is the, these are the pressures which will be present normally. The normal pressures have been shown on this side. Now what happens that when acute cardiac failure occur, the topic of our discussion is inability of the acute cardiac failure or the, the cardiac failure which occurs acutely or rapidly. So the inability of the acute cardiac failure to cause peripheral edema rapidly. Now why the, why edema cannot occur rapidly in acute cardiac failure it's because when the cardiac failures occur acutely this heart is normally pumping the blood and suddenly a problem occurs due to which the pumping the pumping of the heart stops and the heart cannot normally pump the blood what will happen is that the blood that is present in the left ventricle cannot be pumped the blood in the left ventricle cannot be pumped into the aorta and what will happen that the pressure of blood that we have labeled as mean aortic pressure will starts falling down. The pressure will start falling down. Here we see. Here, I mean, aortic pressure is 100 millimeter of mercury in the normal circumstances. And here we, uh, we have shown our cardiac output. The cardiac output was normal here. Now, as soon as the cardiac output has started decreasing, is because the heart has stopped pumping normally. So the mean aortic pressure has started decreasing. Now, what will happen to the right atrial pressure? The right atrial pressure, which normally is zero millimeter of mercury, it will start increasing the right atrial pressure, the pressure at this level, it will start increasing. And both these pressures, both these mean aortic pressure and the uh, right atrial pressure, the pressure in the aorta and the pressure at the right atrium, both of them will meet at the level of 13 millimeter of mercury. And what happens to the pressure in the capillaries, the capillary pressure, the capillary pressure will also basically fall down. The capillary pressure will also fall down from 17 millimeter of mercury to 13 millimeter of mercury. Now, one thing is now clear that in acute cardiac failure, the mean arterial the aortic pressure has fallen down in, uh, in an acute circumstances. The aortic pressure has fallen down, the right atrial pressure has increased, but the capillary pressure has also fallen down. The pressure in these capillaries here, the pressure in these capillaries have basically fallen down from 17 millimeter of mercury to 13 millimeter of mercury. Edema normally occurs, edema normally occurs when there is increase in pressure at this point and there is increase in capillary pressure at this point. So for example, this is a capillary and here we start increasing the capillary pressure. More and more blood is being pushed into the capillary. 
So there are poles. There are pores in the capillary from which fluid will start oozing out. Fluid will start oozing out. And this fluid, when it accumulates in the periphery, when this fluid accumulates in the peripheries, like for example in the legs, or if in the case of lungs, if it accumulates in the parenchyma of lung, this fluid is basically labeled as edema. So the fluid, for the fluid to ooze out of the capillaries, for the fluid to ooze out of these small vessels, either in the lungs or in the uh, peripheries, but we are basically talking, we are basically especially targeting the peripheries in the in the lungs, the, even in acute circumstances, edema may occur. But we are talking about the peripheries, in the legs, legs especially, we see that for the edema, for the fluid to go out of the capillary, the pressure inside should increase. The pressure inside should increase. But what we see here is that the capillary pressure has basically fallen down from 17 to 13. So, rather than increasing the pressure, the pressure in the capillaries, the capillaries has basically been decreased. The blood flow has been decreased and there has been a sort of shutdown in the capillaries. So, there is no fluid coming out. Now here we understand that due to a fall in pressure in the capillaries, due to a rapid decrease in cardiac output, due to acute cardiac failure, there, the, there is increase in capillary pressure, uh, there is basically decrease in capillary pressure, there is a fall in capillary, capillary pressure and that's why due to decrease in the capillary pressure in acute cardiac failure, no edema occurs in peripherally in the acute circumstances. With the passage of time, with the passage of time when fluid accumulation starts, Edema will ultimately occurs. Edema will ultimately occurs, but not in the acute circumstances. And why it doesn't occur? Why uh, the, there is inability of the acute cardiac failure, or why edema does not occur in acute cardiac failure rapidly? Is because the capillary pressure falls. Because the, there is a fall in mean arterial pressure, the pressure in these uh, areas, and there is a rise in right atrial pressure due to change because of a decreased pumping effectiveness because of the uh, changing dynamics of the heart. So this thing leads to inability of the acute cardiac failure to cause peripheral edema rapidly. So edema can occur, but it will occur in chronic conditions. It will occur when enough fluid accumulation has occurred with the help of kidneys and other um, mechanisms, but it will not occur in the acute circumstances because there is basically a fall in the, in the pressure at the level of capillaries. So when there is a decrease in pressure, there is inability of the fluid to go out of the, cap the, the capillaries. There is inability of the fluid to go out. And when fluid will not go out of the capillary, so no fluid will accumulate in the peripheries and edema will not occur. So that's all about this topic. In the next topic, we will discuss the edema in chronic heart failure and the causes and the mechanisms of how the edema occurs. Thanks a lot for watching the video.